In 1740, George Whitfield visited Middleton, Connecticut, and turned the world upside down for farmer Nathan Cole. When Nathan learned that Whitfield was near, he literally dropped his farm equipment, grabbed his wife, and galloped to the meeting for fear that they might be too late. I felt the Spirit of God draw me by conviction, longed to see and hear him, and wished he would come this way. And I soon heard great multitudes flocking after him, under great concern for their souls, and many converted, which brought on my concern more and more, hoping soon to see him. But next I heard he was at Long Island, then at Boston, and next at Northampton. Then one morning, all on a sudden, about eight or nine o'clock, there came a messenger who said, Mr. Whitfield is to preach at Middleton this morning at ten of the clock. I was in my field at work. I dropped my tool that I had in my hand and ran home through my house and bade my wife get ready, quick, to go and hear Mr. Whitfield preach at Middleton and run to my pasture for my horse with all my might, fearing that I should be too late to hear him. I brought my horse home and soon mounted and took my wife up and went forward as fast as I thought the horse could bear. We improved every moment to get along as if we were fleeing for our lives, all the while fearing we should be too late to hear the sermon, for we had twelve miles to ride, double in little more than an hour. When we came within a half mile of the road to Middleton, I saw before me a cloud or fog rising. I first thought it came from the great river, but as I came nearer the road, I heard a noise, something like a low rumbling thunder, and presently found it was the noise of horse feet coming down the road, and the cloud was a cloud of dust made by the horse's feet. As I drew nearer, it seemed like a steady stream of horses and their riders, scarcely a horse m more than his length behind another, all of a lather and foam with sweat, their breath rolling out of their nostrils in the cloud of dust. Every horse seemed to go with all his might to carry his rider to hear the news from heaven for the saving of souls. I heard no man speak a word all the way three miles, but every one pressing forward in great haste, and when we got to the old meeting-house there was a great multitude. It was said to be three or four thousand assembled together. We got off our, from our horses and shook off the dust, and the minister were then coming to the meeting-house. I turned and looked towards the great river and saw the ferry-boats running swift forward and forward, bringing over loads of people. The oars rode nimble and quick. Everything, men, horses, and boats, seemed to be struggling for life, and the land and banks over the river looked black with people and horses all along the twelve miles. I saw no man at work in his field, but all seemed to be gone. When I saw Mr. Whitfield come upon the scaffold, he looked almost angelic, a young, slim, cinder youth, before some thousands of people, with a bold, undaunted countenance, and my hearing how God was with him everywhere as he came along, it solemnized my mind, and put me into a trembling fear before he began to preach. For he looked as if he was clothed with authority from the great God, and a sweet solemn solemnity sat upon his brow. And my hearing him preach gave me a heart wound. By God's blessing my old foundation was broken up, and I saw that my righteousness would not save me. Then I was convinced of the doctrine of election, and went right to quarreling with God about it because all that I could do would not save me, and he had decreed from eternity who shall be saved and who not.